there is a storm down in the Caribbean. As many of you know, I live in South Florida. And if you are in um, any kind of situation where there might be any type of storm coming or power outages, this is a little bit of an advice type video for you. This is um, something that if we have a storm or hurricane or something that could be threatening us, this is something that I like to do. And I think it's wisdom. You know, we are, especially here where it's hot all the time, we use our deep freezers and, you know, our, our big freezers for a lot of our food prep. But during a storm that can leave you without electricity or during any kind of major power outage, any situation where there might be power outages, um, it's always nice to have a backup plan. And that's what I'm going to show you today. Today is my backup plan is to always have extra canning jars. Now, this storm is not anticipated to actually begin to come into Florida for another couple days. So I am using my stove. If something ever happened that we were without power by, um, you know, just sort of unexpected and we didn't have prep time, I do have a two burner Coleman camp stove on propane that I could use for canning. I always, always, always have extra canning jars. I'll have five or six cases of pints and five or six cases of quarts that I have not used just for this type of purpose. What would happen if the grid went down? What would happen if, um, you know, I was without electricity for eight days during the last hurricane that came through about five years ago. So I'm not gonna be caught unaware. I'm gonna show you guys a little clip of what I was doing today. This is, I'm super busy. This is not a professional type video. You guys know I usually don't make professional type videos. But this is just a look into my day of prepping for a potential hurricane to come. Okay, here it is. This is September 24th. There is a nasty named tropical storm out in the Caribbean, which is projected to turn into a possible category three hurricane and at this point it doesn't we're not exactly sure where it's going to go but some of the models have it coming right to South Florida and I'm in South Florida so I have three freezers thank god they were not all full and I am cleaning out my freezers and prepping for possible power outage the last time we had a major hurricane that came through here about five years ago I was without power for eight days. This is my plan for any grid down situation where I am going to have to preserve what's in my freezers. And of course I have a can around here. There's vinegar. In here I have more soup bones. Some thawed chicken meat to have bone in and boneless. Um, down here is some of my, the rest of last year's garden green beans. Got to can those up, some breakfast sausage. This is all whole chickens, and I'm gonna have to roast those and debone them and can them. Over here, I had about 20 pounds of ground beef. I cooked it in my roaster. I've just rinsed it out, I haven't scrubbed it. I cooked it in my roaster for about, you know, just until it was done. Um, and just wasn't pink anymore. I put a little water in there so it wouldn't stick. I cooked all that up. I left about two pans in the roaster. I added some uh, bag of freezer corn that I had and I didn't have a ton of um, frozen vegetables right now. I did take the two bags of peas. You can't see in there the light is, is blown out. But right back there is my dehydrator sitting on my dryer and it's running with all the frozen peas in it. I took um, about six quarts of my already canned tomatoes. I had a tomato soup base with some cabbage in it and I had Italian tomatoes. Of course I have um, a lot of canned tomatoes. I had plenty to spare. And I made a goulash with um, a bag of okra that I had just gotten from the last of my dad's okra harvest a bag of freezer corn and some of my tomato products and about two, two and a half pounds of the ground beef. The other seven quarts are in here. Over here, 
I'm using my Instapot right now. It has a chicken leg quarters in it. I can cut that up and can it with the bones in, but when I'm doing huge amounts of meat, um, I, I don't like to have the bones in because I use huge amounts of jars. This way I can cook it, let it cool, I can debone it and make stock with the bones and fit a lot more meat into my jars, which is what I'm doing now. Over here I have beef soup bones that are um, cooking for broth. I already did uh, this thing full of beef soup bones this morning and I have the rest of the beef over here that I got off of those bones. That's in here, cooling down. I'm gonna can that. Here's the rest of the ground beef. I'm about to jar this up and can it. Here's the first batch of chicken leg quarters that came out of the Instapot. I'll debone that and can that. Um, make sure you have an excess of canning jars for this purpose and this reason because when you have an excess of canning jars, if the power goes out and your meat starts to thaw out, if you have a way, even if you have propane, you know, um, a camp chef, like I have a dual camp chef, in a little bit I'm gonna have to get out there and can on that, and because I've just got way too much stuff, just a can on my stove. This is about to come to pressure. So, we've got that going. There was something else I was going to show you. Hmm. I remembered what I was going to show you. I knew if I stood here in the kitchen long enough, I would remember. In here, I had one roast chicken already thawed out, and I had a bunch of frozen cherry tomatoes in the freezer that I use um, to throw into soups, stews, and whatever. I had about three quarts of those, and I need to pull them out now because I want to can those. I want to make it up into like a, you know, um, diced tomatoes or something. And I've only got a few bags of the green beans and I can, um, those are about similar canning time. So I can do the green beans and the tomatoes in jars um, in the same canner load. Okay, I thought of something else. Here's some empty recycled um, milk jugs that I had. And I am just running water through my Berkey filter. And as soon as it's done running the water through, I'm putting it out into that so I can have some um, gallons of fresh drinking water. Just in case. And I just received an Amazon order. This has nothing to do with canning for the freezers, but everything to do with preparedness. I got these Augustin Farms dehydrated potato slices. You keep watching Amazon. Um, if you'll just type in like dried food number 10 cans about well, once a week and go through there, these were drastically reduced. Every now and then, you know, when their sales drop, they'll drop prices. So these were like about $8 for the sliced potatoes. And that has the 25 year shelf life, I think. Always putting back some stuff for the pantry. So thank you guys for uh, stopping by and checking out what's going on. I wish you all well. I hope everybody is safe. And I hope everyone is prepared. And until next time, bye y'all.